All right, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about shadows in KOWP. And before we dive into this, uh, I am not uh, the best designer when it comes to making things look nice, uh, adding the depth to certain things. But I do want to go over some things about shadows for those of you uh, who are interested in this. Uh, I couldn't find the exact piece I was looking for, but I have read somewhere where shadows, using shadows a lot in KOWP can make the wallpaper uh, lag a little bit, but there are ways to avoid um, that as well. By Instead of you using the shadow feature per se, um, you can just create another shape beneath the object to have the effect of a shadow. But um, through my experience with using shadows, what little bit I have used them, I haven't noticed a, a tremendous lag. Um, I do remember way back when I was first messing around with them a long time ago, I had just way too many going on, and I think it did cause a little bit of a lag issue. Uh, other things too, if you're good with Photoshop or some type of graphic design, uh, by all means, create your, if you want static shadows, it's probably just as good to create a PNG image or a bitmap or something like that and just import it into your custom live wallpaper and do it that way. However, with all that said, um, I am going to show you some things here. As you can see, the minute hands, second hands, uh, these shadows here are actually moving in relation to where uh, the time is. I don't know if you can notice, if you notice that there, but that shadow's kind of moving as the second hand moves. And the same thing for the minute and the hours and then down here is an example of where if you use shadows uh, it I'm trying to create a clock down here with shadows and this is where just creating a PNG would probably be the better bet because you, you can get your your numbers can become off-centered as you can see over here it looks a little crowded nonetheless let's go ahead and have a look up here at the top I don't know if you can see that but look up here where it says December the 23rd I'm actually using the gyroscope on my phone and hopefully you can kind of see the the black behind these white letters. You see how that black's moving? So that's one way, and that I'm not even really using the shadow feature in KOWP for that. I'm just using uh, a piece right behind this December 23rd, and I have it uh, set to move based on the gyroscope in my device. And we'll go ahead and I'll show you all these other ones in KOWP as well. There's a couple of spots you can get shadows from. But um, going back to the home, the root, uh, the first one, like I mentioned here, I got shadow date and front date, and really it's just two text items. They're positioned in the same spot. The front date is just the white that you see here. You can get create whatever text item you want, and then pop one right behind it. This is the one that's the actual shadow, and I have its paint set to black. And underneath animation, I have animate gyroscope, and I have it scroll. And you can set it to whatever uh, axis you want. If I set it to X and Y, it will respond a little bit more. We can change the speed a little bit. That will make the shadow jump all over the place. But um, let's save that, go back to the home screen, and see what we got here. Uh, so now, as you can see, the shadow is moving a lot more because of the speed, and it's also moving based on the x-axis and the y-axis, but it's kind of a little jittery there, but maybe if I adjust the speed down a little bit, we won't see as much. But that's one shadow feature there. If I come through and let's go to... Um, Let's go to overlap group shadow. So I got this overlap group and it's this one right here. You can actually apply shadows uh, to overlap groups as well as just the individual items themselves. And I tell you what, before I do that, I'm gonna come down to the clock. So this clock right here, if I were to go to the, let's go to the seconds. And I've, create, I've, showed, I've done tutorials on creating clocks and then this particular shape it's going to be the blue one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is the second hand. And underneath FX for that shape, you can actually go to Shadow, uh, set it to Outer, adjust your blur however you want to. The direction is how I have the shadow moving. And this is mentioned numerous times in the custom community on how to get it to uh, move. For second hands, we take DFS, which is seconds. We divide it by 60 and we multiply by 360. You can also pop a negative out here in front of this. It's just going to move the shadow in the opposite direction. Either way, it'll give a nice effect. It'll kind of give some depth to your clock where the second hands are actually above the actual surface of the clock, if that makes sense. But, um, you know, over here at the custom live wallpaper community I did a quick search on shadow and if you look through some of these questions here uh, where is it? it but scroll through them have a look 
numerous people have commented, and I think Frank even mentioned, on how to get that shadow to move. But that's what's going to make that shadow not stay in the same spot. It actually kind of appears that it's moving uh, with the light that's actually hitting it. Of course, there's no light hitting it. So that's, how, that's one way you can apply shadow. Um, whatever shape you may have, um, I think you have to have it inside of an overlap group, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, maybe not. I could be wrong there. But no, you don't have to. If I just go back to the root and add a shape, um, it's that tiny square up here at the top. So if I come down to that square, go over to FX, yes, that, that is right. You do need to have this stuff inside of an overlap group to apply shadow to it. Very important. Glad I thought about that. Um, other ways to get shadows. So uh, overlap group shadow, that's going to be this one here. You can actually, once you create an overlap group, so I have this uh, rectangle and then I have the time inside of there. If I go to layer for this overlap group, and if you scroll down a little bit and go to FX, you can actually apply some shadows there. Um, that's what's creating this long one here. However, what you're going to have to do to see that shadow sometimes is to go back into the shape that you have inside of there. In this case, I have this white rectangle. If I just take all this padding off, you're not going to see the shadow. See that? And that's why we got to apply a little bit of padding. I'll do some, uh, what did I have? Top padding, no, bottom padding. That way you can actually see the shadow starting to come out. And then if I do some right padding, you'll see it come over here to this side. And that's how you can get that little effect uh, of somewhat showing some depth in the custom live wallpaper. Of course, we could fine tune this a little bit more. Um, what I have here, let me show you that one as well, the drop shadow. The drop shadows would also can give some depth, but I've just been doing goofing off uh, with my particular piece up here. This one here again. Inside of the overlap group shadow, overlap group shadow where I just showed you where this shadow was down here. If I back out of here and I go to the time that I have in there. Notice I have this time sitting inside of an overlap group. When you put overlap groups inside of overlap groups, if I go to this overlap group that has the time in it, if I go to its layer and I come down to FX, we have an additional one. It's called the drop shadow and you can fine tune that one where I've actually applied that same code, the DFS divided by 60 times 360 and that's what's making this shadow, it doesn't really like a shadow though, but if I take away the direction. Let me take that code out of there. And that therefore it's going to kind of put it in one spot. You can mess with the distance a little bit. Um, and what direction do I want this to be in? Let's see here. And something else about shadows too. Um, the shadow actually moves the object that you're applying the shadow to. So that that's, you know, I, I didn't, that's what's happening down here. When I have these shadows applied to all these numbers, it's actually moving the white part and the black part. So be careful with that. And probably to, to prevent that lag that I've read about, I couldn't find the exact post. Of course, I didn't look too hard either. But if I come here and just apply a shape, and let me just take this square. This is the way I would probably do shadows, to be quite honest with you, unless I was doing some type of graphic design. I'm going to position this over here at the center right. And I'm just going to bump it to the left a little bit. Okay, so I got that square right there. What I would actually do with that square if I want a shadow and I don't want the shadow to be moving, of course, we could make the shadow move as well. I'm going to copy and paste that square. And now that really just have two squares, uh, one right behind the other because they're at the same position. I'm going to come back to this first one that I have. I'm going to set its paint to a darker color and I'll apply some transparent to it, uh, boom. And then I'm just gonna take that square right there and I'm just gonna bump it over to the right a little bit and bump it down a little bit. And if I save that and go back to the home screen, that right there gives the most depth to me in my opinion. Uh, and it's not really a shadow. It just looks like this white square is sitting up off of this gray area because I really just have two shapes. Um, we can actually apply animation to that thing as well. Since that item is sitting inside of root, make sure I pick the right one. Uh, well, this is the same one, by the way. Uh, just remember, this is the one that's the shadow because I have it layered inside of root. Uh, remember, this is going to be in front of this 
gray shadow piece. And if we go over to its animation, um, let's react to this on the gyroscope as well. So react on gyroscope. Of course, this is going to move. I don't want speed to be at 100. Let's bump it down to about 10. And let's save this and let's go back to the home screen and see what we have now. So if I'm moving, as you can see now, I have the top, the December the 23rd, but also we have this thing here moving with the gyroscope. So if you fine tune that stuff, um, again, that right there, out of all of these that I have up here, that is probably the, the that's the way I like it the most, um, especially per, to prevent that possible lag issue. Again, um, experiment with it. You know, I just want to show you the main places where you can find shadows. You can find it underneath the, kind of recap one more time with you. We can create them without even really doing a shadow, like that last example I did. Or if I go back to my clock, um, inside of a specific shape, as long as it's sitting inside of an overlap group underneath FX, you can go adjust its shadow there. And the other two things, remember too, you can also do a shadow with the entire overlap group underneath the FX inside of the layer tab. And then if you have overlap groups inside of overlap groups like this one right here, you can get the drop shadow. So plenty to mess around with there to add some three-dimensional pop to your custom live wallpaper. And then one last thing too, it, instead of trying to create this stuff, uh, a lot of guys, gals on KOWP, you know, they'll use PNG images that already have somewhat of a, a shadow effect. And you just kind of uh, make sure make sure you have a transparent background to these pieces or create them in Photoshop or Inkscape or whatever you're using and uh, pop these things right into your custom live wallpaper as an, as an image. And there's your shadow already built in uh, into the image itself. And there you have it. That's just a quick overview of shadows. Again, I'm not really diving too deep into it because I'm not the best with creating something visually stunning uh, like what some of, the, some of the other work you can find on the custom gallery or on the Play Store. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.